Hello everyone. Welcome back to the new session of biology. Standard 11th, chapter 10, animal tissue. In last lecture, we studied the details of adipose tissue. In that, we studied about white adipose tissue and brown adipose tissue. Then, we studied details of dense connective tissue. In that, we studied two types, that is regular and irregular. In dense or regular connective tissue, we studied about tendons and ligaments. Then, we studied the details of dense irregular connective tissue. And then we started with supporting connective tissue. In that, we studied the details of cartilage and its types. There were four different types of cartilage. Heline cartilage, elastic cartilage, fibrocartilage and calcified cartilage. Today, we'll start with the second part that is bone. Talking about bone, bone contains a hard matrix called oisin. Oisin is made up of mineral salt that is hydroxyapatite. The bone is externally having a covering and that covering is very tough. That outer tough covering is called periosteum. Periosteum encloses matrix and I told you the name of matrix is osin and it is very hard. Now here periosteum uh, in this periosteum blood vessels and nerves pierces through it and matrix is arranged in the form of concentric layers called lamella. Now each lamella contains fluid filled cavities called lacuna. Now fine canals that radiate from each lacuna are called canaliculi. Canaliculi of adjacent lamella connects with each other as they transverse through the matrix. Now in lacuna you will find different types of cells are present. They are osteoblast, osteocytes and osteoclasts. Here you will find osteocytes and osteoclasts are inactive bone cells whereas osteoblasts are active bone cells. Now if you see a mammalian bone then mammalian bone shows a peculiar haversian system which contains haversian canal in the center. Haversian canal encloses an artery, vein that is blood vessels and nerves. Now there are two different types of bones present in human body. First one is spongy and second one is compact. We have to study the details of these two. In short, now talking about spongy bones, you will find in spongy bones, haversian system is absent. So you will find there will be gap in between. You will find reticular matrix is arranged in the form of trabecula. It contains a red bone marrow. Whereas, if we see a compact bone, in this the matrix shows presence of haversian system. That means there is no space among them. Between lamella, there is no space present. So that's why they are called compact. Now, coming towards the next part that is muscular tissue. Talking about muscular tissue, muscular tissue we know it consists of different types. Uh, first, let's study the introduction of muscular tissue and then we'll study the types of muscular tissues. 
now talking about introductory part you'll find uh, the cells of this tissue or muscular tissue are elongated and are called muscle fibers each muscle fiber is covered by a membrane called sarcolemma cytoplasm of muscle cell is called sarcoplasm so remember the outer covering is sarcolemma the cytoplasm is sarcoplasm and here you will find large number of contractile fibrils are present in sarcoplasm those contractile fibrils are called myofibrils they are very important uh, you will find uh, one or many nuclei are present in muscle cells depending on the type of muscular tissue now uh, myofibrils they are made up of proteins actin and myosin muscle fibers contract and decrease in length on stimulation hence we can say that uh, muscular tissue is also known as contractile tissue uh, it is a vascular tissue and is innervated by nerves also you will find muscle cells contains large number of mitochondria because in order to do muscular activity energy is required and you know mitochondria is considered as power house so mitochondria will help in providing that energy now coming towards types of muscular tissue there are three different types of muscular tissue uh, they are uh, skeletal muscles or you can also call them as striated muscles or you can also call them as voluntary muscles uh, they are striated because they contain dark and light bands they are called voluntary because they help in doing voluntary activities they are called skeletal muscles because they are attached to your skeleton or you can say bone uh, then second one is smooth muscles they are also called as non striated muscles or involuntary muscles or you can say visceral muscles now if i say non striated that means striations are absent that is no dark or light bands are visible then they are called involuntary because they help in performing involuntary activities and they are also called as visceral muscles because they are found present on visceral organs then third type is cardiac muscle the name itself indicates that it is present on heart and it is a special type of muscle now let's see the details of each type let's start with first one that is skeletal muscles uh, as i told you these muscles are found attached to bones or you can say skeleton uh, it consists of large number of fasciculi which are wrapped by connective tissue sheath called epimysium or fascia now here you will find muscles are found in bundles okay that bundles are nothing but they are fasciculi and that fasciculi are actually wrapped by connective tissue and that connective tissue sheath is epimysium external covering or you can also call it as fascia then each fasciculus is covered by perimysium itself the bundle is covered by perimysium each fasciculus consists of many muscle fibers and these muscle fibers are called myofibers each muscle fiber is syncytial fiber if i say syncytial that means it contains several nuclei that means more than one nucleus is present Uh, the cell membrane that is called sarcolemma surrounds the cytoplasm and i told you cytoplasm is called as sarcoplasm so your sal sarcolemma surrounds sarcoplasm sarcoplasm contains large number of parallelly arranged myofibrils hence you will find that the nuclei gets shifted towards the periphery so here in each skeletal muscle 
वॉट एवर न्यूक्लियस इज प्रेजेंट दैट इज प्रेजेंट टूवर्ड्स द पेरीफेरी दैट इज अवे फ्रॉम द सेंटर ईच मायोफाइब्रिल इज मेड अप ऑफ अ रिपीटेड फंक्शनल यूनिट दैट इज कॉल्ड सार्कोमियर ना इफ यू सी द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ सार्कोमियर यू विल फाइंड ईच सार्कोमियर हैज अ डार्क बैंड एंड अ लाइट बैंड डार्क बैंड इज कॉल्ड एन आइसोट्रॉपिक और यू कैन से ए बैंड विच इज प्रेजेंट इन द सेंटर then in the center of a band that is dark band you will find a light area is present that light area is called h zone or hensen's zone then you will find in the center of h zone there is a line that line is called m line so here dark band that is a band contains a light area that is h zone h zone contains a line in the center that line is called m line a bands are made up of myosin and actin on either side of a band you will find light bands are present light bands are called isotropic or i bands these i bands contain only actin myosin is absent now why you will find myosin are thick and dark colored whereas actin filaments are thin and light colored so in a band you will find both myosin and actin that is light color also and dark color also whereas in i bands you will find only light color that is only actin no myosin now adjacent light bands are separated by z line uh, z stands for zwischen ships line so here dark and light bands on neighboring myofibrils correspond with each other hence you will find striations can be seen clearly so as striations that is uh, light dark light dark like these bands can be seen that's why we call this muscle as striated muscle now coming towards function of this muscle uh it shows quick and strong voluntary contractions then uh, it brings about voluntary movement of the body and as these uh, muscles undergo strong voluntary contractions so they are more prone to fatigue now there is an important note you have to remember that on the basis of amount of a red pigment skeletal muscles are of two different types they are red and white muscles now if we talk about a red muscles it contains very high amount of myoglobin and if we talk about white muscles it contains very low amount of myoglobin so here in red myoglobin is more in white myoglobin is less now what is the function of this red and white muscles actually these uh, red muscles are uh, slow pace worker they are used to work for longer period of time or for slow contraction when is talking about white muscles uh, they are fast but they help to work only for short period of time that means to give uh, any stimulus to give reflex action you need white muscles which will give you a quick a reaction but for short period of time only but red muscles they are used for longer period of time uh, now another important thing uh, as i told you red muscles has got large amount of myoglobin white muscles had got low amount of myoglobin what is myoglobin actually myoglobin is an iron containing red color pigment which is found only in muscles and uh, this myoglobin actually consists of one heme and one polypeptide chain 
so you will find it can carry one molecule of oxygen now due to presence of myoglobin in muscles the muscles can obtain their oxygen from two sources one is myoglobin itself and other one is hemoglobin which carries oxygen along with it so as myoglobin is present in muscles so muscles can get oxygen from two different sources that is one myoglobin and second one hemoglobin now coming towards the next type that is smooth muscles uh if you see the diagram you'll find these muscles are present in the form of sheets or you can say layers uh each muscle cell is a uh, spindle shaped or you can say fusiform uh you can see the shape it is pointed from either side and it is broad in the center that is spindle shaped or fusiform whereas the skeletal muscle was a uh, cylindrical type now here you will find in smooth muscles the fibers are unbranched having single nucleus at the center in skeletal muscle the nucleus were shifted towards periphery here the nucleus are present at the center then sar sarcoplasm that contains myofibrils okay and myofibrils are made up of contractile proteins that is actin and myosin but here in smooth muscle you will find it contains less myosin and more actin so if actin is more myosin is less striations could not be seen so striations are absent uh these muscles are innervated by autonomous nervous system so they are found in the walls of visceral organs and blood vessels and you will find that uh, these muscles may be arranged uh, lengthwise that is with the help of longitudinal muscles or a round circumference that is with the help of circular muscles of any organ so you can see they are either lengthwise arranged to any organ or circumferentially arranged to any organ now coming towards functions uh, these muscles undergo slow and sustained involuntary contractions that means these actions are not under your control so that is involuntary so they bring about involuntary movement of the body and as they are very slow the contraction is very slow so they are less prone to fatigue now coming towards the third type of muscle that is cardiac muscle uh in this muscle uh, you will find uh, the tissue shows character of both striated and non striated fibers now how you will find sarcolemma is not distinct uh, hence uh, you will find uninucleate muscle fibers appears to be multinucleate and uh, we know that multinucleated character is for striated and here uh, adjacent muscle fibers are joined together uh, to give branched appearance to the tissue actually the muscles are uninucleate but they appear as if they are multinucleated and the muscles are joined together in order to give a branched appearance now the point of adhesion of muscle fibers that means the point where the muscle fibers are attached are formed by transverse thickenings of sarcolemma that is called intercalated disc uh, these junctions at places they allow the cardiac muscles to contract as a unit now because of this what happens the cardiac muscles are striated in voluntary muscles so that means they show both characteristics uh, the characteristic of striated muscles also and smooth muscles also striated muscles that means striations can be seen uh, uh, they are multinucleated or in appearance and as they bring about involuntary action so they show the character of smooth muscles uh, 
it actually forms a myocardium of the heart wall and the name itself indicates it is a cardiac muscle that means it is present only on the wall of heart uh, function it has only one function that is it helps in quick transfer of stimuli and one important note you have to remember that is uh, in some mammalian uh, mammalians you will find the cardiac muscles are modified and they are capable uh, capable of generating impulse on their own uh, such heart which can generate impulse on their own are called myogenic heart so you will find mammalian heart is myogenic and in some animals uh, these uh, impulse has to be generated with the help of neural stimulus that means some animals in in them you will find cardiac muscles need neural stimulus that is nervous stimulus to initiate the contraction of heart uh, such kind of heart is called neurogenic heart that means the heart which is controlled by nerves the heart which controls itself is myogenic with the help of muscles and the heart which is controlled by nerves are called neurogenic heart so let's see the summary what we studied today today we studied the details of a bone in that we studied two types of bones spongy and compact bone then we started with muscular tissue uh, in that we studied the types of muscular tissue in that we studied skeletal muscles then smooth muscles and cardiac muscles i hope you understood the topic we'll continue again in the next lecture till then take good care of yourselves thank you